Good. So what, what I'm going to do is to, um, to go through what a die-in is. Um, then there, uh, there are various forms of die-ins and I'll, I'll go through the diff different descriptions and forms of, of die-ins. How to do one. So um, obviously it would be great if people could start doing, doing them. I have to say they're probably one of the easiest actions to do and um, it's very, very unlikely that you would get arrested for doing a die-in. And then what I'd like to do is to ask anyone who's taking part in a die-in or um, if you've organised one, what your personal experiences of it. What did you observe? What, what were the feelings that you had? And then what feelings and, and thoughts do you think other pe people had when they were watching it? So um, I went to the XR website and, um, and the first two are the definitions, their definitions of a, of a die-in. And I'll just move you guys over there <laughs> so I can see. <laughs> I said, Dying is a peaceful, non-violent pro protest wherein participants lie on the ground for a specified amount of time. It's a solemn act that symbolises the kind of future we face without government action um, in light of the cr climate crisis. And, and I, I put this one, as, I believe it's an opportunity for the public to gain an understanding at a, a deeply emotional level of the impacts of, of the terrible impacts of climate change on the people of the global south. So um, on to the different types of die-ins. The very first die-in I did was in Stroud and it was in, uh, we did two in one day and that's another possibility. If you've got gather people together, you can actually do more than one. And so we did one in a very busy pedestrian precinct, which was actually on a slope. So that was quite interesting. And, and then the second one we did was in front of a municipal hall. And I always remember lying, this is the first time I'd, I'd done one, I was lying there with a sheet over me. And it's quite an, an interesting experience where you're listening to what people are saying. And um, there was one mother, a young mother, I think, obviously I couldn't see her. And she was explaining and she really did this in a wonderful way. And I felt like jumping up and asking her to join XR, like, like Lazarus. But she said something like, and she did it, you know, obviously at a child's level, she said, well, these people are here and they're, um, so they're, they're actually, um, they're doing this because people have died, many people have died and, and they've died in places like Africa and in, in, in various parts of the world. And they're dying because um, we're using far too much coal and gas and oil and, and the temperature of the world is heating up and that's why these people are dying. And then she went through the different descriptions of the placards that you can see there. And I thought, isn't that wonderful that um, this actually gave her the opportunity to show in in a very real way what was happening. And she didn't seem to shirk from the fact that it was obviously quite, a, potentially quite a distressing thing. So I think that's what um, the power of a, a die-in can achieve. Um, and so in, in shopping areas, especially if they're busy, they're a good place to, to do a die-in. This was in Buchanan Street in Glasgow during COP26. And um, Sarah MacDonald is there reading out a commentary. So I'll, I'll be able to provide that and talk about that later. So there are different forms of, of doing one and um, shopping areas are, are, are pretty good um, places to, to start. And these placards are, are very important. Um, the white sheets are very important, and, um, and, but the, the placards are important so that people can literally just read. You don't even have to engage with the public, although sometimes you might want to do that and explain a bit further, depending on what objective you have with, with regard to the dying that you're taking part in. Uh, but the, the placards are really important. And, and I have um, the notes for all, in the notes, I've got a Word document, which I can post to Mattermost and to, um, to the WhatsApp chat, which gives full details of the wording that's used in, in these placards. Um, so we found that railway stations were really effective and, and Caroline, you were at the one in Queen Street and Central, weren't you? And, and the, the, the good thing about railway stations is it's inside time, <laughs> so for the British weather it's great, you know, it's not as cold, but also just that, uh, especially if it's rush hour, you've got a lot of people and it's quite, um, it's quite a dramatic one, and I'll show you a video in a second of the one we did in, um, in Glasgow Central. So again, this was during COP, so maybe there was a bit more heightened awareness at the time about the climate emergency. And then you'll see just to the left there, XR Buddhists, they came along to the die-in. So um, I think, Joe, you were talking about um, vigils. And so you can combine a vigil with a die-in. And so people are sitting there praying as well as, and you know, you can sit praying for these people who have died and for their families. So that can be a very, a very powerful combination so I'll try and share this. I think I'll have to come out, Caroline, won't I? I'll come out and then I'll just um, 
share the screen and do share sound and then come on to the next thing. Whoops, no, I didn't do that right. Hold on one second, let's do it again. Um, I think I need to put the, 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 the thing on, don't I? Okay, so I think I might have done that correctly. No, sorry. Have you tried to do something quickly? <laughs> this is up. Okay, just a second. I'll come to this because it is quite good if you can see this uh, film. Right, okay, so just go back to the share screen. Share sound, share. Um, and here we go. Hopefully, you'll see. Okay, so um, that um, that gave you an idea of the, the 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 use of a drum, which is very effective in um, in terms of getting um, your message. Just go to the next one. So the, the it was uh, one one of the CCA guys um, beat that drum. So you can imagine that you can't talk with all that noise going on. So you have to think of other ways to get people's attention. And people really, I mean, there were quite a lot, weren't there, Caroline? A lot of people stopped, and you could see that from the photographs. So I would say that that was probably the most impactful one that we did, and it, it really did stop people in their tracks. Um, so an, another possibility is to um, have a die in at specific events, and this was um, this one was just outside the SECC um, at the at COP twenty six. So all the delegates were going in and out, a massive amount of people, and um, and it was actually XR Wales who started the die in at nine o'clock in the morning on one of the days of, of I think it was the second week of um, COP, and um, and you can see a lady there who was talking about the climate crisis. So they started at nine and they, they were going to finish at eleven by having a sort of rotation of bodies um, during that two hours and then I thought well I had my climate I had my die in kit with me and I thought well I'll just see if it can carry on for a bit longer and so we had this sort of turnover of bodies as as the day went on and we actually kept on till 4 30 in the afternoon and because the media were desperate for um, visual things, we were we got on BBC and ITV and a lot of press and a lot of people interviewed. So this was a very um, impactful uh, die-in from the point of view of media attention. And um, and one at one point, this is quite an amusing point. The um, a, a police officer came up to me and said, um, "I just want to check that these people are okay." And uh, I said, "They're fine. We, I check up on them from time to time." And she said, well, "I want you to go and." And ask them to wiggle their feet to, see, to show that they're alive. So to walk around the back and ask them individually to wiggle their feet so that there was a sign of life. So it just shows you that even in a die-in it can be quite amusing. So um, the, that, that's one example of um, something happening, something going on that's obviously quite big. Obviously, COP26 was big. Another, um, uh, another opportunity was at St. Paul's um, in August when um, there was obviously action going on inside when, when we were arrested. And then outside, it was Lizzie who actually gave me this whole die-in kit, and I have to thank her um, for that. She, um, she organised a die-in outside. And again, this is an opportunity to, if something's going on, then you bring along your sheets and your placards, and I've got a little suitcase to do that. And, and then you can quite easily, especially if you've got enough people, just organise a die-in. And it really doesn't take a great deal of advanced planning. So that's another opportunity. And for example, next week um, in Cheltenham XR, we are uh, doing a Barclays action. And so I'm going to organize a die-in there as well, just outside Barclays. So there are different opportunities and different ways of carrying out a die-in depending on the venue and depending on what you want to achieve. And so um, just thinking about the organization of a die-in, there are different roles involved. Uh, you need obviously you need someone to lead it. With police liaison, now Melanie um, at the Buchanan Street um, die-in, the first one we did at COP, she, um, somebody had found out that we were doing it and the press were already there, it was quite odd. So Melanie quite rightly decided to involve the police and they couldn't have been more helpful. And especially at the, the Queen Street Station and Glasgow Central ones, they were really, really cooperative. In fact, 
a police officer. I went up to one and said, look, we want, we're going to do this die-in. It's, you know, it's not going to be any, anything else except a very, um, a very peaceful um, uh, demonstration, uh, um, die-in. And so we went up to the station, mas mas uh, station manager's office. And at that point I thought, oh gosh, if she says no, then we've got a problem. But in fact, she was really helpful. She, she we actually changed the location and that was a better location and all went well. So the police in general, that's our observation, is that, that they're, they're fine with, with dying. So then you need um, corpses, you need a minimum of eight. I've, I've, I was thinking that it would be actually a good thing to do at the back of a church um, where you have the congregation literally stepping over the bodies of, um, of the people who have died. Um, and so you might need, not need um, you, as many if you, if you are actually inside a church. You then need someone to read out the commentary and, and a drummer if you choose. Um, in the open spaces, you do need people to engage with uh, the public. Um, I would say that we've not really needed de-escalators. No one's got, I think at, at Stroud, there was somebody kind of saying some negative things, but they didn't really make any big fuss. And then when you, when you start it, you do need people to cover the bodies of the sheets and to place the placards. And um, then, so what you do on, on just before you, having decided where you're going to do it and you've got enough people, you start with a briefing and then an allocation of roles or volunteering of roles and you decide how much time you want to spend on the ground. And this can be um, about 20 minutes or in the case of the, you know, the day long one, you then have to have people stepping in and, and, and taking over somebody's space. And so the members, you wander around the identified area for the die-in and then you allocate um, or somebody has to volunteer for corpse number one and um, falling to the ground, not dramatically, just going to the ground and then immediately the volunteers cover the bodies oops, and place the placards. If it's windy, um, you can place the hand and the corpse on top of the placard um, without obscuring the writing. And in fact, we have found that the hand dangling out of the sheet or a leg is quite effective, um, which um, it, it does sort of make it look a bit more, I don't know, intense. Um, and then it, it's good to have this accompaniment of a single sombre drum and, and a commentary if, if it's appropriate. And then at the end of that, you, you know, everyone, um, the people who are, cover, who are uncovering just touch the body and touch the person and then lift the, the sheet and then people stand up and walk away. So it is very, very simple to organise. Um, I mentioned this commentary, and um, so I have a copy of this in the how-to guide as well. And um, so if it's if it's in a, a less busy or less noisy place, um, here are a couple of examples of things that were actually read out. Um, so they say, these people have died from the devastation of a climate catastrophe. We mourn their untimely loss. Moses starved. Crops failed in his region and storms and floods have meant insufficient imports over several months. With an underlying medical condition already, lack of food over several weeks led to Moses' death. May he rest in peace. And then the, uh, Ayla was, uh, I'll just read that out briefly. Ayla was murdered. Her village was cut off by flooding. After a few days, there was no more food cut off from supplies anywhere. She had vegetables in her garden. She refused to give them away, keeping them for her children and elderly mother. Three men entered her house one night, stabbed her and pillaged the vegetable plot. May she rest in peace. So you can see that the commentary actually gives real meaning to the, the reality of people already dying from the climate emergency. And it can be very poignant when you're relating. These are real people. It's not just a theoretical thing that's happening in a far off country. And so it can be very effective to be in use. So um, now um, what I'd like to do is just share a personal experience of a dying. We can do that in the whole group. And then if we go into breakout group, um, rooms, we can think of a venue and date for a future dying, and it could be combined with a vigil. And one of the things which I'd like to ask you to think is what message do you want to convey? What do you want people to go away feeling and thinking, having observed this? And that can um, that can vary. That can vary, and you you can actually. I think at Queen Street we did hand out leaflets, so you can hand out leaflets as well. So it can be quite flexible. Well, they are flexible in terms of what what you what you want to achieve at any given die-in. 
So I'll just stop sharing now.